Daigo Baldin was born in East LA to a Mexican family. He grew up spending his time hanging out with kids on the street, shining shoes, and getting into fights. Guy saw that the Japanese boys on his block were respectful and studious. They welcomed him into their circle of friends. Guy soon learned Japanese customs, culture, and language from his relationship with the boys and their family. Guy was 16 years old when Japan bombed Pearl Harbor and drew United States into World War II. Guy and his brothers went up to sign up, sign up to the Navy. Guy was denied because of an injury to his eardrum from a fight he had been in a few years earlier. At 17, Guy tried again, this time trying to join the Marines. At first, they too turned him away, but when Guy told him he could speak Japanese, they sent him off to basic training. Guy was now headed to the Japanese-controlled island of Saipan. After a brutal and bloody landing of the, on the island of Saipan, Guy realized that venturing further into enemy territory would quickly increase the death toll for the U.S. forces. He took it upon himself to try to see if there was a better way of achieving the goal of securing the island. Guy Gabaldon ventured off without permission in search of enemy soldiers. Guy used his Japanese language to convince two soldiers guarding the entrance to a cave to surrender by yelling to them. Tio wa gero, anata wa ho i sa reta iru. Kofuku shi ro giga i wa ku wa i na i kara. Which means you are surrounded, throw down your weapons, come out with your hands up. We will not harm you. Guy's commanding officer, Captain John Schwab, warned Guy that if he ever did that again, he would be court-martialed. The same night he received this warning, Guy, believing he could do more again, left the camp in search of Japanese soldiers. This time he came back with 50 captives. Instead of being court-martialed, Guy was allowed to work as a lone wolf. Because of the U.S. forces gained very valuable information from the Japanese prisoners Guy captured. The Japanese soldiers had been told that if U.S. forces captured them, they would be killed and tortured. Surrender was not an option. Luckily for Guy, he not only knew the language to talk with enemy soldiers, but also had enough knowledge of their culture to persuade them that there was no honor in dying for no reason. The street-wise Latino kid from L.A. was able to connect with his Japanese captains as people. For the next three weeks, Guy continued his as a lone wolf into enemy territory. Guy used the smell of soy sauce to detect caves used as hideouts by Japanese soldiers. He offered the soldiers fair treatment and food as he went looking for their strongholds. By the time the end of the battle on Saipan was within sight, Guy's solo expeditions had led to the capture of hundreds of soldiers. These soldiers provided valuable intelligence to U.S. commanders. One such piece of information was about the Japanese plan for one final attack on the U.S. forces. This brutal assault would have had far greater casualties had Guy not gotten word of the plan the night before the attack. His work in enemy territory gave the U.S. forces valuable time to prepare. They were ready when the Japanese soldiers came charging. On the morning of July 8, 1944, Guy saw three soldiers keeping watch above the last remaining Japanese camp. Guy walked toward the men the same way he did in his lone wolf missions and used his knowledge of Japanese culture to begin bargaining with the men. He told them they would not be harmed if they surrendered and that there was no honor in allowing women and children to die for no reason. He gave the guards cigarettes as a sign of his honesty and intentions. Guy convinced the officer to speak with the remaining soldiers and civilians about the possibility of surrender. 
He knew that he was greatly outnumbered, but kept up his courage and confidence to show the men he was in charge. By the end of the morning, more than 800 soldiers and civilians agreed to surrender to the 18-year-old. When the Battle of Saipan was over, Kai had killed 33 soldiers and captured more than 1,500 by himself. He is the only person that had done something like this. His heroism saved lives on both sides and earned him the nickname, the Pied Piper of Saipan. Kai would later say the worst part of the war was how he had to watch the soldiers and civilians he couldn't convince to surrender commit suicide by jumping off the cliffs into the rocks and ocean below. For his bravery above and beyond the call of duty, Guy's commanding officer, Captain John Swab, recommended Guy for the Medal of Honor. Guy was given the Silver Star. This was later upgraded to the Navy Cross. When he was asked about why he hadn't received the Medal of Honor, Guy thought it, it might have something to do with his Mexican heritage. He also said that he and the other U.S. soldiers didn't go to war to win awards. They did it to serve the country. <laughs>